is that today, tonight, tomorrow morning is a really good time to make a new sort of start and go, okay, okay, so now, okay, I've, I've, I've let myself go for Christmas because everybody around me, again, that global thing, everybody around me is doing what they're doing. January the 1st, I am going to effortlessly drink less wine. And one of the things that will actually really help that and really seriously support that is if you can cut out sugar. Yes. Because if you think about how much alcohol is in sugar, <clears throat> and if you replace the drink eating sweet things, which a lot of people do, then you're still going to have the cravings. If you were to cut out sugar, you would find that your cravings would change completely. So have you got <clears throat> any top tips on on sugar, Carolyn? Or is it just as simple yes, as yes. just don't have it in the house? Sunflower seeds, sunflower seeds really help. Yeah. Uh, munching on sunflower seeds. There's a supplement called chromium picolinate. Chromium, as in C-H-R-O-M-I-U-M, picolinate. Chromium picolinate naturally stabilizes blood sugar. And then if you're going to stop sugar, if sugar is quite a big range because what you want to be able to do is come off refined flours. So only eating brown bread, proper brown bread, whole, mm. whole wheat, not just dyed brown bread. Whole wheat pasta, uh, whole wheat cereal, no cakes or biscuits or pastries or croissants because that's all refined flours. And so they very, very quickly turn into sugar. So you literally, you could have some fruit, but no dried fruit, no dates, no stay, you know, um, no maple syrup, no agave syrup. You just completely cut all that out. And it, it takes about four or five days for your blood sugar to normalize. But as long as you're having, say, brown rice, brown, proper brown bread, uh, sprouted grain breads, that kind of thing, you'll yeah. start to balance your sugars. And you may actually find that your stress levels diminish. That's why I stopped sugar. I stopped sugar six years ago, was to take my stress levels down. And uh, it, it changed my life to the point where I've never considered going back to eating sugar because it is so addictive. Yeah. And then if you're then parallel to that, bringing your drinking down, it, it really supports you hugely, hugely. I remember Dee talking to me about this um, eating and he uh, he was put on a yang diet and basically it was brown rice and all of those kind of things you've just been talking about. And he just said it was the most incredible experience to completely transform by um, yang eating, as he called it, um, mm. because I guess mm. sugar is yin and fruit and things like that. Yeah, there's different uh, there's different ways of looking at it. Um, addiction definitely has its roots in 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 trying to satisfy the self, trying to get more dopamine into the into the body or created by the body. That's what we're doing. We're always looking for a hit, whether that's from a lover sending a text or something that we eat or drink. We need to change how we feel. We we find ourselves unbearable. That's why we want to drink. So recovery is about finding other tools and su supporting yourself in becoming bearable. It's an interesting process. Um, we have different ways. So, so addiction, we can look at it from that perspective. Food, we can look at from other perspectives. Yogically, you have sattvic, tamasic, and rajasic, which are the three layers of food. So um, sattvic is the highest level of food, which will be food that's grown above the ground. So things like rice, apples, things like that that are off the ground. Yeah, and then you have the food on the ground, rajasic. So things like um, crops that grow, you know, like spinach, that kind of thing. Yeah, and then you've got uh, tamasic, which is the energy of decay, things that grow under the ground. And although that's also garlic and stuff like that, it also includes um, meat and alcohol and drugs. They're all considered toxic. You know, they're the they're the energy of decay. It's quite a sort of it's quite an extreme spectrum of looking at food, but it's a yogic way of looking at it. And so the more the more you want to meditate and be elevated and, and be out of the sort of um, negativity of life, then you bring your food up out of, that's why vegetarianism, that's why you come up into brown, brown rice, whole grains, that kind of thing. Yeah. So you've got lots of different schools. And then one of the things that works very well with an addictive nature is to stay off sugars and carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates. So then you start looking at things like the 5-2 diet and the Paleolithic diet, and you find ways to reduce the body's craving for sugar because the body, the liver especially, will take sugar from anywhere to change how you feel. Yeah. It's quite, I mean, it's quite an interesting 
it's an interesting route to go through. When I run the addiction training, the second part, the third part of the addiction training is all about food, all about the different ways you can eat, how it works in the body. Because if you think about we're talking only mainly about wine, drinking less wine, that was the focus. But that addictive personality will have shifted. Some of you will have noticed that in not drinking, you actually want to do something else. In not, in not satiating yourself with the alcohol, not numbing yourself, not changing how you feel, not going into that altered space, however you consider what you do. If you don't do that, then you look for something else. And you're kind of ranging. You know that word ranging? You know when you go in a zoo and you see panthers pacing and ranging, looking for something, there's got right. to be something to change how I feel. We become like that. Yes. Looking around. But then, then okay, well, I can't drink. Okay, so I've said I'm not going to drink. Okay, well, then let me text somebody. Let me let me go shopping. I know what I'll do. I'll go shopping. No. Oh, God, I'm so angry. And you just kind of flip through a whole series of different extreme feelings because it's unbearable not not to, you know, it's unbearable to be still. It's unbearable to be the self. And actually, interesting, come full circle, that's why yoga is good because when you sit on the mat, yes, and especially if you really lose yourself in the practice, you experience yourself as exquisite, and you start to trust yourself, yeah, and you start to know that actually you can change how you feel. You don't need something external to change how you feel, and then you've got to get over that child that stamps its foot, the child inside you, the angry, hurt, stressed, whatever child that says. I don't want to do it. Somebody else has got to make me feel better. And you step up and you think, actually, I feel like crap right now and I'd really like to drink, but I know if I do this breath for five minutes, I'll feel okay. And then you actually do it. <laughs> and that's yeah. an amazing moment. 